Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Daniel Lee's podcast. It's time for another episode and I'm thrilled to introduce this week's guest. He's a former fashion model who has taken the industry by storm. Not only is he known for his impeccable style, but he's also known for his eye for detail. He's also a true pioneer in the fashion world and is the founder of House of Victor. In this episode, we'll be diving deep into his journey from the runway to the boardroom. The challenges he's faced along the way and the secrets to his success as a visionary leader in the fashion world. So get ready to be inspired and learn from one of the most exciting voices in the fashion industry today. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming our guest, the one and only Martin Victor Almasri. Hi, Danny. How are you? You wasn't prepared for that, were you? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, thank you for joining the podcast. Thank you for the first inviting one, me. The first one, I believe. The first one, yes, yes, yes. You've been, I mean, you've I've been, been on, on radios yeah, on TV, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. come to think of it, oh wow, that, that yeah. now that's extra special. Exactly, my fourth birthday for the podcast yesterday, and now your first ever podcast. Happy and fourth it, anniversary. It is truly um, an honor to have you here because you are quite an iconic figure uh, in the UAE and, and in the fashion world. And to be able to um, have you to sit with us today and talk about your journey in uh in 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 the world of business and fashion is uh is a, is a real honor so thank you for that again thank you so much <laughs> i'm excited uh to talk about many many stories yeah. and and um what it takes to build something yeah yeah i did you a bit of a misjustice though on the intro because uh we talked about house of victor but uh that's not your only business right well the house of victor is the one that started everything yeah so now we have the victor magazine we have infinity world models we have uh la Vote hair professionals yeah. uh we have so much i mean like we have a holding company now called vbh victor brands holding so yeah. um we can break them down whenever yeah. you want <laughs> yeah yeah definitely well um well i mean obviously it's quite a unique story from that we're going to get into uh but we'll, we'll talk about the business side of things uh, later on um but let's let's go back let's go back to 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 mini mini martin what was life like as a kid for you i uh, in a nutshell i like to do the opposite of everyone as a group doing like for example in school whenever i see like a, a gang or a group of yeah. uh, colleagues doing something and following each other this is like where I tell myself, go to the opposite direction and somehow it worked, mm. you know, and as an Egyptian being with like in groups or, or a group of friends or even family members or cousins, it's, um, it's kind of a thing there. Yeah. The so, Arabic family culture is very much together. Yeah, and I never liked that. Yeah. Yeah. I felt it's not benefiting me or serving me at any point. So I started focusing on things that I know I will thank myself for later, yeah. like learning English. Mm. I didn't want to have like an Arabic accent. Yeah. N not that I have anything against it. It's just I cannot imagine myself with an Arabic accent like that yeah. heavy. Yeah. There's a lot of people that speak to me, especially as an English person. Um, I mean, like my, my girlfriend, she's Brazilian and she, when she hears herself back, she's like, I want to sound like you. And she does like, <laughs> when she she speaks her English accent, she's like, hello, like, she, but, um, but it always seems to be a thing that people want to to either have that kind of like American or, or English accent. But what what like what made what made you feel that? Was it like a film inspiration or something? Or no, none at all. It just I wanted to be clear hmm. and understood by all. Yeah. I uh, I don't think I have an American accent as well. Yeah. I think it's, it's more neutral. of a flat. Yeah, yeah. You know. And it's working. I mean, it's it's great. The fact that I can talk to anyone. And and when I was young, like I speak like this since I was young. And that yeah. was the the beauty of it, because not all of my family members can understand English. Yeah. And that was my advantage. And when I found out that I have one thing they don't have, I liked to add one more thing to that. So mm. I learned music, for example. I learned how to sing. Even I tried to make something out of it. I, I guess it just wasn't for me. Mm. And I focused on fashion after that. Yeah. Well, obviously on the point of school and, and doing the opposite, were you quite, uh, were you quite isolated then if you just wanted to do things by yourself? Mm, I was 
not isolated i just chose yeah not to mix yeah you know but yet i was still influential i yeah. was a, like i had so much trouble in school yeah. like i got kicked out like numerous times yeah and and how was like school did you did you enjoy it or was it something that because i i mean it's something that we talk a lot about with all of our guests um and it always is quite fascinating that you know some of the most successful people tend to not like the way that school was being taught when when they were kids but did you enjoy it it just i really learned nothing mm. maybe it was a bad school i don't think so it was a, like a nice school but it just what i wanted to learn wasn't there yeah by anyone there or anyone teaching or anyone supervising it just wasn't serving me mm. and uh how was life at home like how was like the you've got brothers and sisters or a lonely child i have um one brother that's okay. a year younger than me um and that's it so we're only two brothers completely opposite actually he's more into tech mm. Um, and I'm more into me. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, we, we are close, but just two different industries. Yeah. And, um, when you was a kid growing up, cause it's always quite funny cause a, a lot of people will, oh, I want to be this, I want to be that, but it's, did you always have a clear vision of fashion or was it something that kind of like came later on? I didn't have a clear vision until I was maybe 19. A fashion made me see how powerful I can be and how influential I can be. And I'm good at it. Like, I like it. So it was just me doing something I'm good at mm. without feeling like I'm working. Yeah. So I give indefinitely and unconditionally. Mm. So... And what did your um what did your parents do uh, like what were their like jobs? Okay, so my father was an importer and exporter. My mom worked for the government okay. uh, for quite some time. Um, my father is retired now. Yeah. So you, 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 your dad's an entrepreneur, then let's say. I would call a trader more. Yeah. Yeah. But it was his own business. Yes. So do you think do you think that seeing him have his business and I assume he probably worked quite a lot as well, right? He did, and he retired early. Yeah, it's still his company, though. So yeah. he just doesn't have to go to the office yeah, anymore. Yeah, but what I mean is, obviously, from seeing you know a parent figure working um, their own business and and having their own business and and kind of seeing that subconsciously, do you think that had an impact on you? No. No? no, no, no. Did he ever take you to work and was like, "Come and, come and"? Let yeah, me and I you leave you. after ten minutes. Yeah, because again, you know the setup. The, the the people that that he has again it's like a different world to me mm. you know when you feel you don't belong there i don't force yeah i always tell everyone it's okay if you don't like martin please keep going it's it's not a problem for me yeah you know yeah. it's a it's a very um especially it's, it's quite interesting you say that especially been such a such a public figure as well because um when you hear about uh a lot of famous people that go on to, to 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 be famous, whether it's singers, they care a lot about what people think, you know, and it kind of like overwhelms them. But obviously from what you say there, it's kind of like, if you like what you want, if you don't like, then. Um, I used to care a lot, a lot, yeah. what they think, what should I do that they like. In, it never led to anything good. Yeah. Or lucrative for that matter. It mm. just made me more stressed. Mm. And I was like, one day, okay, I'm not going to have a head full of gray hair and nothing to support it. So yeah. I stopped. Yeah. And um, just going back to the parents, did you, did you have a good relationship with your, your parents? Well, my mom died in 2010. Yeah. And up until then, we had a very good relationship. And mm. my father, we're not so close because, again, it's completely different interests. Mm. But whenever he's in town, he's welcome to... We meet like yeah, yeah. for lunch, dinner. Yeah. He comes to my house if he wants. He knows yeah. the address. So, yeah. and how was it with uh, obviously having such a close relationship with your mum and her passing? Like, how was that to kind of like deal with, especially two thousand ten? So, I mean, that was some time ago. So, young man, you know, trying to trying to achieve big dreams and stuff, and then that happens. How did that affect you? It made me stronger. 
Yeah. It made me take life more serious. Not as serious as now, obviously, but it just, I processed it differently. I was extremely sad mm. and she was young, I was younger. Uh, she died with cancer and it wasn't easy. Yeah. But it changed something inside of me forever. Yeah. What What was that that it changed though? I became stronger. Yeah. I became more um, receptive. Mm. I became more... Uh, how to say that? I Resilient, maybe? Mm, you could. Let's call it that, yes. Yeah. It's... Uh... It's funny how these 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 moments affect people individually, right? Because it's such a pinnacle moment in somebody's life where that can either send you completely west or mm. send you on, you know, a path of destruction. Destruction being powerful, yeah. smashing your goals, all that sort of stuff. Um, so it's interesting to, to to see how those types of things process. But um, I've got a friend back home that's actually suffering at the moment, and it's it's pretty pretty bad. Um, and you know, he posts regular updates about how he's doing and it's the same for, I suppose it's obviously sad to see, but I think it's such a reminder for you to be like, you know, life is, life isn't free. Things, things do happen and, and bad things happen to the people you love. It's all about kind of going off and, and just living that life. Cause I'm sure your mum looks at you now and I'm sure she's looking down like super happy with everything you've achieved because Obviously, she knew you as the the young Martin, right? And now you've gone on and, and, and achieved amazing things. I think if she was here with us today, she would be surprised. Yeah. Because um, that's the beauty of it. No one knew where I'm going. I yeah. didn't know where I'm going. Yeah. I'm still going. <laughs> yeah. Do you... um? I mean, whilst we're on that topic, do you, do you, like, was it, was it always the goal to, to start your own fashion brand or was it just something that you just thought, I see a gap here? Mm, when I was younger, the first goal was to move away from the town I was born yeah. because it always made me emotional and weak and I wanted to eliminate that. When I moved to the capital, I became more strong. And when I moved here 10 years ago, that was the ultimate change. Yeah. I um, I didn't want to be 30 and still don't have um, a system yeah. that I'm good at, uh, a company that I can be creative. And I like to create. Yeah. I'm, I'm good in creation in general, mm. you know, and I make from nothing something. Mm. That is the journey. Like a lot of people think like, um, okay, fashion is just oh, some clothes, some photo shoots. And no, no, there's so much more. Yeah. And you not knowing about it doesn't stop it from being true. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, uh, I was obviously, thank you very much for the invite to your, to your show, uh, last week. And, um, you know, the thing I was thinking about was just, you know, when I saw all the models walking down in different outfits and they weren't, you know, a lot of fashion now, it tends to just copy a concept right and it's just but yours really is just and then i'm not just saying this because you're sitting on the podcast like every piece of what somebody was wearing was completely different like and i just thought to myself how does this guy get creative like what does he do like what, what like where does he take his brain to be able to think of these pieces right you know i have an amazing team yeah. and i'm literally nothing without them how many people do you have working for you now in, in that in that team? In the House of Victor or in yeah. the holding? In the House of Victor, yeah. Like 15. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we're creating everything together. Uh, our design studio is amazing. Yeah. You should visit, by yeah, the way. Yeah, 100%. Where are you based? Silicon Oasis. Okay, nice. So basically, we do love to come up with a story. for Again, no story, no product. No yeah. matter what you try. Yeah. So we always come up with a story what are the models doing and when the story gets formed it, it could be in a brainstorming day or it can be documented on a paper or even like a voice note sending to each other on the group um then when we have the full story we start to sketch together yeah but the creative idea or the print or or the artwork must come from me like we are as a house of victor we are a print brand 
Yeah. It's just this season I chose not to print at all. Yeah. And that was another surprise because everyone is always expecting print, 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 loud. It wasn't that loud, I think. Yeah, no, it was... Um... Oh, what is the word? It was powerful. It was. It was powerful because it was like every every piece had a statement, but it wasn't like in your face. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, and like you say, it's personality, it's story. It's 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 having that kind of like background of what what piece led to to, to that um, area. Now, although I want to keep on this conversation because it is really interesting, and we'll come on to more about House of Victor and stuff. But I really want to touch base on on how you got to this point because obviously at the beginning, I mentioned that you was a, a fashion model. How did you actually get into to modeling? Well, when I arrived to Dubai, I was friends with only one person. He's a photographer. He's a very famous photographer here, actually. And just on a day, he told me, why don't you come uh, to one of my shoots? I was new. I was bored. I didn't want to stay home. Mm. And before you know it, one of the models didn't show up. And I just was there. So even in Cairo... <laughs> Um, when you lived in the in the capital, you wasn't focused on fashion then or, or modeling. No, I was studying. I studied hotels and tourism. Actually, I graduated and I came here the same month. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And then you come here and you. you it's it's funny, isn't it? It's it's so it's so fascinating on on the journey that you, how you get to where you are today. So, and it was all by accident then. So you literally no just... coming wasn't by accident. It was a decision. Yeah, going to that photo shoot was just like instead of staying home, being in the shoot was the accident. Yeah, yeah. A beautiful one. Yeah. So you, you how, how old were you when you landed in Dubai as well? 21. So, so yeah. young, young. I mean, I came here when I was 24. And, mm. and you know when you're 21, 24, that type of early 20s, you don't feel like you're young. But then when you get to like the age that you are now, you look back and you're like, Okay, we were really young then, you know. Um, but what was it like, you know, stepping off the plane, new country? Did you have a job? Um, I never really, really, and I'm sorry to say this, like I never really worked for someone, like per se. Yeah. Uh, but no, I was jumping from like a, a project to another. Yeah. You know, I tried different things. But at this age, because we don't learn how to master the art of life, yeah, and it's not something you see in a book, now you do, um, you go through different things, and by the time you have the experience to make a right decision, you're already around 27, mm. maybe 28. And yeah. believe me, some people are in their 30s and they don't have a clue about well, life. Do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Um and then, okay, so you went to that photo shoot and was it for a particular brand or was it just for him? Was it for his like kind of like portfolio? It was an e -com, so it was multiple brands. Oh, wow. And how did that feel like the first time? Were you nervous? No, no. Uh, I, like for me, I'm, I'm a little bit friendly. So yeah. I'm always smiling. Whatever the situation is, I try to shape shift to it. Yeah. And that helps. Yeah. So you you kind of went in. And it's, it, what, I, I mean... I really like I, it's just it's just trying to get into that mindset because for, for me what I'm understanding is you you've never really suffered from nerves you don't you know you've never really suffered from <sighs> of course I did yeah. I mean how anyone that says that it's either drunk all his life or yeah. not that eloquent um but for those particular situations you you kind of just you just felt at home then basically well here's the thing I tell myself a little story in the head to help yeah. Or I shapeshift. If you shapeshift into something, it's like you're part of it all along. So it doesn't feel as nervous. First time on TV was very nervous. Yeah. First time on the radio, absolutely no. Yeah. First time with you now. I think it's, um, yeah. what do you think you should rate? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's very fluid, you know. It's not like, okay. you know, it's uh, like like we said at the beginning, it's it's like, it's, a, it's like two friends catching up for a coffee in the coffee shop talking about what they've been up to, right? It's not... It's not really, uh, there's not many, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's flawless so far. So Good. As, as we continue. Um, okay, so, and then at what point did you realize that kind of modeling was going to be a sort of career that you could focus on? Because there's there's obviously going to one photo shoot for an e-commerce brand, 
but then how did you go on to like be as as you know as well known and renowned as as you were networking yeah that is your true asset and yeah. it's your net worth it's who you know who you have influence on and who likes to be around you and that becomes you mm. you're you're the average of like five six people around you yeah so look around you know and then i jump from one thing to another until i was like okay now it's time to sell mm. hence the house of victor yeah and let's talk about some of your most cherished memories then on 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 on, on the catwalk as such um did you did you focus on like catwalk stuff or was it mainly just like let's say like photo shoots and, and what it was, what was you, mostly yeah. e-coms it was yeah. uh, mostly private uh, brands that are in europe but they happen to have the shoots here i did also a lot of uh, shoots in budapest and prague because yeah. I, I love i love budapest it's amazing and yeah. prague too um catwalk no i didn't do yeah, I didn't know. I don't know why, even though like I got offered all because I'm extremely tall, as yeah. you know. So I just didn't want to do it. Yeah, because um, because at the fashion, like this, this is why I thought you would have done, um, catwalks because uh, at your show the other week, I mean, you like, I mean, it looked like you've been doing it for your whole life. I can do it if <laughs> I want, but you know, my focus has shifted towards yeah. creation more. So how's the victim? Um, so. When did you realize that that, that, that you had a, a gap in the market for creating House of Victor? When we started in December 2019, there wasn't that much brands, like not not many like that are an Emirati brand because the House of Victor is a 100% Emirati brand yeah. and I'm going to keep it that way forever. Um, I just wanted to create something new. I wanted to create something big. I want to create something that is accessible, you know, um, because most of of the brands, if you see, like not everything on the runway can be an everyday. Yeah. But for me, I wanted to remain streetwear. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people are asking, when is Victor going to go to Avantgarde or Couture? I don't think now. Eventually, we'll head there, but not now i want to remain streetwear yeah you know i want everyone looking at a photo of victor an editorial an advertorial in a magazine or something or the fashion show i want them to imagine okay i can wear that mm. and in their head i can wear that there in a certain place yeah. that is communication that is how to profile your fan your customer but when did the idea actually come around because you know I've, I've interviewed so many people now. Um, and you know, a lot of people always say, uh, you know, I really want to start a business, but I don't know what to do. Um, and also as well, a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, successful people that I've spoken to, they always say the hardest thing to launch is a fashion brand. Yes. And I made all the mistakes that you can think of. Yeah, and I lost a lot of money because of my own mistakes that I hundred percent take accountability for. But the beauty of this, I would never make them again. Yeah, lessons that I you... learned. It was a very expensive <clears throat> bill. Yeah, but how did the idea come around though? Like, when was it? Like, was it one of those moments where you literally just woke up in the morning, got a shower, and it's like, poof, House of Victor? Or was it something that just kind of like had to develop over time? Okay, so I like to travel to Europe and a lot, and I'll come back again to Prague. Mm. So um, I was in Prague, December 2019. There's a wonderful park there called Etna Park. Yeah. And from there, you see the entire Prague city, old town, Charles Bridge and all. And um, I was in the park and I always make clothes for me. Even before the house of Victor, I, I used to design only for me. And someone was passing by and uh, I was taking like a photo and someone told me, oh, what you're wearing is amazing. What is that? And I told him it's me. That had an echo that I can still hear it today. Yeah. And I was like, 
if that's someone that doesn't know me and don't have a career in fashion, I don't know, I guess don't have a career in fashion and liked what I'm wearing, imagine if I broadcast that, imagine if I make that business. And at this moment, it was a decision I should make a brand. Yeah. The word Victor was not born then. Mm. It was another story. Yeah. What was it? What was the original name? Come Martin. On. Just Martin. Yeah. You know, but I was like, no, let's let's make it something that's not there. Yeah. Um the name took about a month to yeah. come up with. The logo took six months. Yeah. Like the I, the Victor I took six months and I worked with so many people and I couldn't, couldn't, couldn't get what I want. It didn't look right. It just, the only common comment between all of the amazing people that thank you again for bearing me back mm. then, it was like, it's not Victor. Yeah. I always keep a notebook and a pen next to my bed. One night I just woke up, I draw this shape. Then I slept again next day. I showed it to my graphic designer. It was almost finished. It'll make that. And the eye was born. Wow. It's, uh, it is, it, when you're so emotionally invested in something as well, it, it makes everything so harder, right? Because it's almost like you want it to be perfect before you go live. Is, you've had that sort of feeling? Well, you cannot perfect everything, but you can get it to the perfect stage but not perfect everything yeah and then when it's ready it will look ready if it can speak it will tell you i'm ready yeah and this is a an energy this is a vibration that when you get it okay that is ready the same thing that happened with the logo well what i draw at night like it was like 3 a.m do you still have a picture of it mm. yeah yeah maybe you can send me a photo and we'll uh we'll put it on the uh on, on some of the clips Mm, we'll, talk be, talk about it. we'll talk about it we'll talk about it yeah so um you cannot make everything perfect i lost so much time and energy trying yeah and was like no it's okay if i feel the vibration it's ready let's not overdo it yeah and uh has it has it evolved since you first started or has it stayed the same same logo mm, still the same logo i will not change it it's still the same font yeah. Like actually the first name until 2021 was the Victor Closet. Yeah. And then we changed that to the House of Victor. Nice. And when when you when you come back off of um that trip to Prague because it all sounds like okay great I'm going to come back and start a clothing brand but realistically there's a lot that goes into it. So you come back from Prague, what was the next step? Mm, making it official, get a license. Um, start by gathering a team together. And again, I wasn't experienced at all. I'm still learning and I'm learning every day. But back then, and remember, there was so little time then Corona happened. Um, but it made me understand that it's time to do this. For someone who's just about to start a business and Corona happened, we'll take this as an excuse or a sign not to do anything. For me, I was more excited to continue. Once I knew what I should do, I did. Because remember, not everyone will want to help you. Some people will wish you're okay, but never better than them. Um, will not really help. And I didn't want to rely on someone. I did rely on many people. Some of them were amazing. And I'm still thanking them in different ways till today. And some of them were just there to make sure you don't get anywhere. Yeah. And then they kind of like, I dust them off. Sometimes losing a person is a blessing, by the way. Yeah. Yes. It's, uh, no, I, I, you know, it's 100%. Um... Yeah, I completely resonate with that because, you know, when I first moved to the UAE, like you say, you network loads and I met loads of people along the way. And, uh, you know, you, I just went in my different, different direction because I was just like, quite selfishly, my mindset developed into, you know, if, if being around you doesn't add any value to my life, then what's the point? You Absolutely. Know? Um, you know, I've even had people sometimes like friends, uh, or old friends, or well, colleagues just call me up 
And when we were working together at that time and they just moaned down the phone and I'm like, guys, I, I don't have the energy for this. And and then, <laughs> you know, you just move on from that and you're like, and it I suppose it, whilst at the time it's a bit frustrating that that happens, it's also a blessing, as you say, because you learn that what you don't need in your headspace at that particular time. Um, so you started the, you started the brand, you, you, you got it all launched. Um, how did the designing come in at the beginning? Like how did... Because again, like you say, you're new to it all. Did you, I, I assume you did quite well from modeling then that helps you finance launching the House of Victor? Mm, a little bit. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was all your own kind of like investment at the beginning. You no, know, I have a business partner, yeah. uh, Ramon or okay. Ray. He likes to call himself Ray. Yeah. And um, he's my business partner in the House of Victor and the Victor magazine and the modeling agency. But for the other businesses, I have other business partners yeah. and um, we created it together, like yeah. equally. Is um, Does he play an active role in, in, in creating the, the, the brands and stuff or do, do, is, it, is it more you on the creative side? In the management part and operations and legal because he's a legal counsel for the army actually oh wow yeah <laughs> uh, that's that a good person to have on, uh, on as a partner oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> anyone messes you around you got the army on your side <laughs> if need be yeah 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 we are managing it together but the creative is all me creative yeah. direction is only me yeah how did you become acquainted with ray we know each other for 10 years. We met in Egypt. And then um, after that, I went to him with the idea. And he said, you know what? I'm also thinking to start a business. And I don't know what is it. So I told him, okay, how about this? How about that? And yeah. then we immediately came to the conclusion it's time. So how, how long was it until you created your first piece? We took about first two months. And because we don't have the experience, so it was a learning curve yeah. that went up, luckily. Uh, like the first collection, you know, the word cohesive, it, yeah. was, it was not there. It wasn't just there, you yeah. know, but we learned, you know, and then the next collection and then the next collection. And then the first fashion show in 2021 was... Wow. Even though it was mostly just black and white, but people loved it. Yeah. And then after that, we did a show in LA and in Los Angeles Fashion Week. And then last year I did a show in Argentina. Um, and then I did another show here in Dubai, the one that you yeah. attended. And then it was good. It was good. The one in Dubai that you attended was the third show in Dubai. Wow. Three different collections, of course. Yeah. And, and I suppose when you create a collection, it's not a one particular piece, right? So, but do you remember the kind of like the first, first item you, you actually made a part of a collection? Yeah, yeah. What I was it? Even was have it? It? it was a coat. I love coats because uh, I look good in coats. Yeah. So the first, first piece we made was a denim laser burnout um, kind of, net or tulle mixed yeah. together and it was so nice you know and like everyone loved it instantly not the other pieces but that particular coat yeah was like a lace burnout and denim not tulle so it was lace it was amazing yeah and then how long did it did you do do you do you make it here or do you make it like in somewhere else, like manufacturing around the world or Everything is made here. As I mentioned in the beginning, yeah. it's an Emirati brand. And this is what I'd like to keep. Yeah. Yes, we have suppliers from around the world, especially for fabrics. Yeah. And um, we bring the material in here, but it's all made in this land. Yeah. It's amazing because you, like, there's so much on offer now in this country from a, from a manufacturing perspective. Um, that it kind of gets to the point where it's like, well, actually what you can, what you can do locally here now is, is, is far superior than what you can do internationally. Um, but how was it finding like people that was going to help make your clothes? Cause again, this is, this is a process that people don't really think about. Like they see, they see you, they see you as a model. They see, oh, I was going to start a fashion brand. And I'm sure there probably was people at the beginning going, oh yeah, he's, you know, just got something to make it for him or do this or do that. Um, like that, that jealous person, you know, but like, 
tell us how, how did you go around finding the right people and how long did it take it took months and I'm a, I'm a proactive person yeah. so I go out I look for tailors I look for workshops I buy fabrics that I can have today until I can master how to order from outside yeah and um it worked out fine. It was a very uneasy phase, yeah. but hey, it was supposed to be uneasy. Yeah, because uh, it, there's a saying, isn't there? It's like if uh, starting a business was easy, then everybody would do it, right? Starting a business is easy. Keeping it is the hard part. True, true. Uh, well, that's you've just counter you counteracted that saying with a different one, which is probably more powerful. Um, but no, keeping it is, is the hardest part. So from, from design to finding a, a tailor to actually being able to like try on these products, like how long was that process? About six months. Yeah. Because take into account there was Corona in between. Yeah. Um, and then when we were ready around June, 2020, we went out to the world yeah. with all the mistakes, with all the spontaneous collection together and with our network we were able to penetrate certain people certain minds certain taste yeah and with time we got the right team the right mindset motivation was always there mm. you know i always say there are many reasons for me to wake up in the morning the house of victor is just the title of the list yeah do you focus a lot on gratitude of course you, see, you seem so, you seem like somebody that's extremely grateful for everything, not just particular things. Absolutely, because uh, there are amazing people in my life that help me go so far, and the minute I forget them, I'm I'm done. Yeah, uh, it's just a matter of time before I fade out, you know. So never never cancels uh, someone's credit. Never, never discredit them. That's the right word. Never forget the energy that they gave you, the knowledge, the 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 word "Hey, you can do it" goes long way. You yeah. never know. And and I do the same for for other people. Like some, a lot of models, they come to me and tell me, "Do you think I'll be successful in Dubai?" I say, "Why not?" You know, a lot of models, they message me from different countries. We're coming in town, would like to do a shoot with you. And I always welcome them. If there is, let's say, not the right profile, I tell them directly. But I tell them, you're not the right profile for the House of Victor. Mm. But you are amazing for many, many, many more, like literally unlimited. Yeah. You know, anyone can be successful if they really want to, if they have the right mind. For it, like there are many books that tells you how to be successful, and well, you have to go and just buy that book yeah. or download the audio version of it. Do you think there is one route to that? Do you th do you feel like there is just w like one recipe where you follow that step by step, you can get to that? There are working systems that if you're not creative enough, you can just apply a working system like a franchise or 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 if you have if you know about quadrants you need to evaluate yourself where are yeah. you to move in between you know so the minute you really write down what you want where you stand today and how you're going to do it some people forget that they are the path they yeah. are the road itself yeah. don't look for a road you are it if you really decided to see it that way mm. look we all regret something we all done all the mistakes in the beginning i told you that i had done many mistakes and thank god i've done them but it's either you regret wasting the time or you regret mistakes that taught you something mm. and there is there is pain in the process, but I'm so glad that I had the pain of discipline and not the pain of regret. What was the most painful experience that you had faced with, with, with starting the brand? That no one believed that Victor will be something. 
all in the same time. The the closest person more than the one from far. Yeah. Yeah, everyone thought, okay, there are so many brands. Who who are you? You don't even know how to design. Uh you just like continue what brings you money. And I was like, no, I want to create something. Yeah. And I'm going to work hard for it. Even if later I bring like a team of designers, I still want to be the creative director. And this is what I'm doing. Yeah. The most painful moment is no one believed. Mm. But I never doubted. Yeah. No. Because I always say I never... I never really started yet. I truly didn't start yet. Yeah. And is that because you kind of didn't necessarily have a plan at the beginning of like, you, you just kind of took it step by step and then learned along the way? Yes, that's true. I didn't have a plan and I'm not ashamed to say it. I was going day by day uh, and then I learned how to plan. Yeah. And it's so much more nicer. Yeah. I think there's, uh, I think there's, I was chatting to somebody yesterday about this actually. Uh, about strategies and uh, they brought a very important point of you know strategies within a negotiation for example and strategies are relevant in certain examples but that but it's not necessarily always the same example that like you don't need a strategy for everything that you do right because sometimes if you go with a strategy like for example if I had a strategy of I'm going to just do this 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 and this today on this podcast we wouldn't get to uncover certain interesting topics that we're going to talk about and what we have talked about. Um, but then going back to the planning thing, there's, 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 there's times where planning is important. And then there's times where planning is just, it's just not necessary. Just, just go with the flow. And I suppose that's a part of like being the creative side of things, right? Yes. But I love what I discovered. Planning is so good. Like, for example, if you want to predict your future, plan it. Yeah. Wouldn't that be easier than just saying, oh, I don't know what's happening tomorrow? Mm, you can if you really want. But planning but planning your life is, is quite a difficult one because you literally don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Like, <laughs> What's going to happen tomorrow in the world if you're eloquent and educated enough, you can predict. If you choose to really believe you don't know what's happening, you're not going to know anything. You're yeah. just going to be entertained. So when uh, the the trials were going on with all the tailors, like how many people did you like, did you, I, I just, I'm just trying to get my head into the fashion world because when you understand all the different body sizes, you know, it's just, everyone's unique in their own way, right? So how did you actually plan to get products for, different sizes and different shapes or are you more down to like tailor making it for customers in victor we have the option for like the vips where they really don't want to shop from the website yeah and uh, they want to just something for them that's a different story but in general um we are a diverse brand yeah you came to the show you looked at the different nationalities the different bodies it was a men's show but we yeah. yet had three amazing women there yeah. because we believe in diversity, we believe in inclusivity. And what's what I stand for personally is that. And so is the House of Victor. We, we like to include everyone because in Victor, we don't make clothes. We make identities. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's all. That's all. Is that is that the slogan of yes. the business? Well, it's not the official slogan, but I always say it. We yeah. make identities because you can be wearing something and completely send out a message or an identity that you want to give. Yeah. Like when people hear a spy, they think of a suit. Yeah. You know, for example, why? Because it's an identity. Yeah. Or a business met a suit, you know, um, European street, a trench coat, you know. Yeah. It's just because it transports that message. It's uh, it's funny actually you say that because although I didn't think of that necessarily in my mind, but it's so, so true, isn't it? And uh, it's also when you talk about the identity side of things, it is extremely powerful how good you can feel when you feel that you look good. Absolutely. It just gives you that... Uh, external motivation, if I can use it in that way, 
clothing is amazing. Yeah. Fashion is amazing. It's so powerful. You have no idea. It's almost like your, uh, let you say, it's, it's almost like your superhero, right? Your superhero outfit. It makes you transform into that person. It gives you that confidence. Well, I don't know about superhero. I'm not but talking traditional superheroes, like going out of Superman, but like <laughs> your own personal superhero. Do you know what I mean? It just brings out a lot more inside to outside. Yeah. Inside out. Yeah, it's like a, it's almost like brings you confidence and encouragement. Like coming to the show, like I'll be honest with you, uh, like I've only done got done a couple of shows before, but when you invited me, obviously I wanted to go and support. And but you know, the first thing that entered my mind was I was paranoid. I was just like, "How do I feel?" I remember How? you asked me what should yeah. I wear. What should I wear? Yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> ended up just turning up in like all black, but a nice sh- uh, shirt and everything. We didn't, we didn't see each other. On yeah, the show, no, right? we didn't know because ah, okay. uh, I, I mean, you were so busy, so it was quite difficult to like pin you to the side. But the um, next one, you have to come to backstage. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent experience. Yeah, hundred percent, and. Um, but like in the end of it, like, and people paying compliments saying, oh, you look nice and stuff like that. It's like, it just makes you feel good. You know? What like, was the feedback from the people sitting next to you? Because, you know, uh, when we watched the show, because it got aired on the fashion it looks channel in the on States. It, yeah, it looks, uh, it looks, honestly, on the, the, the sh- when it was, when we were watching it, it looked amazing. But then even on the camera, when you started sh- um, sharing on the camera, like the, on the camera, it looks unreal, like so good. Like, you know, I, I, that, I heard so many comments like, you know, remember the models who left the luggage in yeah, the middle yeah. of the catwalk? That was like, I was like, what yeah. the hell's going on? <laughs> but that was cool. That was cool because yeah. it was it was different, you know. Like, but these are the small things that I was referring to earlier. I like to put that creative touch. Like, you know, the model left the luggage in the middle of the runway. Everyone thought that the next model will pick it up, but it yeah. was someone from the audience. Yeah. You know, and, and this is how you put a show when did you uh at what point did you sell your first product like because again there's so much that goes into actually launching a product but like how did the launch go and do uh, uh, do you you remember your first sale the first sale was that coat i was mentioning and uh for the first three months we only sold one piece genuinely because i don't count friends who are supporting i'm talking a customer i don't know yeah and that was okay yeah, you know, it it has that happiness. It has that amazing feeling. After that, yeah. Do I need to say more? <laughs> so. Yeah. So I mean, did it did it literally just snowball? Like, because because again, I'm, I'm sure people are probably surprised listening to this as well. Because obviously, with your profile and stuff, comes with a lot of attention. And and to hear that you've only like, like you say friends and family and stuff. But when you when you got your first customer, you look at the sheet and you're like. Oh wow! I don't know this person. Yeah, it was exactly like that. Yeah. We we t- we look at the um, logins of the website, the back logins, and I was like, I don't know that person. Yeah, I believe that's a customer. You know, yeah. it was a really, really. I, and I know it's silly for some people, but for me, it was like a a mini trophy. No, it's 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 almost like I mean, I don't have children, but like the first thing that pops into your mind is like when you, a child does their first steps you know it's like that that proud moment of like my baby is now like evolving you know yes yes and uh that was a similar feeling and uh after that it started to pick up yeah. i got more motivated um i made more yeah you know I, again i have amazing creative team with us uh we started to think how to take it to the next step and i'm actually we're still cementing the foundation we're not even yeah. there yet yeah, and uh, when you, when you did your first fashion show, I mean that that's a, a whole other creative element that, that goes into that. Like, how was that for creating your first ever like show? Again, I was relying on the experienced people because I didn't know how should I react to yeah. this. But after like just uh, always two days before the show, I'm like a different person. I don't want to eat. Yeah. I don't want to talk to anyone. Not because I'm very hard to work with. It's just I really want to save every ounce of energy, if you can measure it by ounce, to that hour. To yeah. that Because my shows are like minimum 20 minutes, not like five minutes. You know, yeah. We do big collection. And uh, first time went very well. The second time I became a little better. 
And the last one was extremely organized. There were like literally for the first time, zero mistakes. Yeah. And even you, I was surprised. And um, what, what, what actually comes off of the back of a fashion show? Um, obviously showcasing your collection. Um, you need to show the new, you need to maintain a certain image. Uh, you need, look, a fashion brand is amazing if we're going to sell online, but the fashion show is like a verification in life. Would you say that the the fashion shows were a part of how the snowball effect happened with the brand? Yes. Once you did. Once you get so you get so many orders from customers who want so much more than the collection you just showcased. Really? Again, I'm extremely clear and transparent with you since like minute zero. Yeah. So this is exactly what happens. What what to us at least. What's what's the um what was the what's the most anyone's ever spent just like online just like i want this this and this do i have to say it i mean in dirhams or dollars? Dir dirhams dollars it wasn't online it was in cash yeah. it was in the office and it was um a very important woman yeah it was uh last year november after we presented our first women's collection because we were a male brand for two years yeah and um, she called and she said, um, I'm in town for a couple of days. Do you think we can meet? And I told her, yes, where do you prefer? She said, I don't, I don't care. So I told her, why don't you come to the office if we need to take measurements, which most probably we will. It's better you, we have the team there. She came and she ordered like, I think seven or eight pieces. Yeah. Uh, all of them were, had nothing to do with that collection. And she paid in cash a very good uh, stack. You don't want to say, do you? I said it's stack. <laughs> yeah. Stack is obviously what well, it's yeah. like a new one. So yeah, yeah, um, nice. And uh, I mean, do you, do you tend to get a lot of high-profile customers? Um, I think I'm blessed with that. Yes. Now you mentioned at the beginning you've also got a holding group, right? VBH is yeah. Victor Brands Holding. Yes. So. How does one have a business that obviously takes a lot of time, but then also manages to run other businesses as well? I mean, like you say, you surround yourself with a great team, but you still are the pinnacle of those businesses. So like, how are you able to like find the time in a day to, to run all them as well? Mm, as I mentioned, um, sometimes I'm extremely organized. Sometimes I'm not. And I guess that's the balance of it uh, for the, House of Victor, I'm the creative director, that's for sure. Uh, for the Victor magazine, I'm the editor-in-chief. Yeah. Uh, for as long uh, as I like, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I can hire anyone to take over the Victor magazine as an uh, editor-in-chief, but I'm still enjoying it. Yeah. And actually, April is our second anniversary. So Victor oh, wow. magazine is, will be two years old. Congratulations. You're going to have a party? Thank you. After Ramadan. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll do a gala in May. Nice. And for Infinity, Infinity is mostly like automated. It's just clients asking for a project or a models or production. So that is, I really just oversee it, you know, yeah. like a guardian. Yeah. And our hair care line. Yeah, let's, let's talk Bouté. more about that because that's... That I feel like that's 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 your next. That's my new baby. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that's like the next proudest moment for you. So, and then how how do you pronounce the name, Zoe? La beauté. La beauté. It's French. What does it stand for? The beauty. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So La Beauté Hair Professional is a huge company in France and Israel, and uh, I'm bringing it here to the Emirates from Dubai. And the owner of La Beauté is also my business partner in here in La Beauté. Wow. And uh, I'm very excited. I think sometimes beginning of May, it will be officially out. Yeah. To the light. I just, you know, I brought a few products and I just gave gifted away to people, to friends, to models. And I only had one single comment. What is this? Where is this coming from? Why does it smell so good? Why it smells like I want to eat it? Why why the gel feels like it's yogurt? It was all very positive. It was amazing because the product is. Yeah. It didn't need any help for me to push it. I just did a dry run 
was very successful. I was like, okay, let's bring Lavote to the Middle East. And what what's, I mean, because you've obviously got like, like fashion, you've got loads of hair care products in the market. Um, what, what makes it special? Every product is also an identity. Yeah. It has that sense. We focus more on the real organic oils as perfumes for the products. We have a hair perfume in La Beauté. Oh, wow. And everyone is saying, even after I put it and I go around, people keep asking me, what is that? Yeah. And when they know it's not available in this market yet, they want it even more. And I have so many models telling me I traveled for vacation, but my mom took my hair perfume. My brother took the, my milkshake gel. My friend took my couture moisturizer. And I was like, well, you have to wait for me. What, uh, what products are you going to launch? Are you, are you launching the full set? Are you going to lim- launch with limited products? Well, we make four collections a year in France and Tel Aviv, but... Uh, we're starting with three collections here all together. Yeah. They're not new collections. There are existing collections in, in the two different countries. And um, those are the most successful ones that the, everyone wants to have them. However, from the next collection, it will be released in sync everywhere. Yeah. And is it a product for men and women? Yes. Wow. And is it is it just is it just for purely like just cleanliness and smell or does it help with like hair growth? It does. We have collections that has a lot of vitamins. The hair perfume I'm talking about is actually ten vitamins. It's called Q10, and we have CO for Q10, hair loss. Yeah? Yes, we have serums. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of products that has vegan creatine because we use everything vegan. Yeah. There is nothing there is not too much chemicals and most of our products are bio organic. Yeah. Nice. So, I'll give you some next time. Yeah, for sure cuz uh the I did a podcast with uh with Nadima Coley. You know her, right? Yes. She was yes, at the show as well. Friends actually. Yeah. So I did a podcast with Nadima and uh she was talking about some of the most sought after products at the moment is like hair care products. Uh and obviously for men as well, you know, like when I get my hair cut sometimes, I see these, even though I, I, my hair grows so quickly, I know I'm not going to lose it. I mean, if I do, I don't know, but who knows? But you, I always get a little bit paranoid about how light it is here, you know? So men, especially, like, are super focused on just just that aspect of things. Because I suppose, like you say, it's identity, right? If it gives you confidence with that you that your hair's growing healthily and... Looks, impressions are like a title of a book. Yeah. It's either going to encourage you to dive and read more or just keep looking at the cover. That's basically it. So to summarize kind of like your whole journey and how it's been so far, uh, would you would you ever go back and change anything? I would have changed. I would have learned one more language. Yeah. I'm learning Spanish now. Okay. I would have learned how to read more books, like really read, yeah, not just flip pages. I'm reading now and I'm proud that I'm actually able to finish one book per week. That is kind of like, it's more exciting. Like one day I didn't sleep because I finished a book in full for the first time. I was like, okay, let's celebrate. I started cooking because I know how to cook. Yeah. I was like just celebrating that the fact I finished the whole book. Yeah. Again, those silly things really keeps you going, really gives you new motivation, new when element. You, when you read a good book as well, it's very difficult to put it down. You 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 live in it. Yeah. And, and, and you cannot just close it. You want to know what happens next, especially if it's like a big novel or, or, or like something, or a, an interesting story. Yeah. When I, uh, I, I was the same to be fair. Like I, uh, I was never really the person to learn by reading things. So that always translated quite poorly into reading as well. I could never sit there and have the concentration to read a book. But as I became a little bit older and a little bit more relaxed, uh, and level headed, I was able to like start watch, uh, reading a lot more books and what I, I'm always, I, I am really fascinated by like, um, personal success self-development everything around kind of like that and personal 
experiences of people what right, they're writing about their life whether it be in business or some crazy stories um but then when i do read a novel wow the sort of dreams i have at night it's just it just blew my mind i, I remember the first novel i actually read and uh the dreams the dreams were just crazy and I, it was like it was like i'd unlocked a part of my brain that had never been tapped into are you reading anything interesting that movie can recommend um for me one of the most uh one of the most powerful books for me were at i would say rich dad poor dad was a a life changing book for me that really that which one the quadrant or the very first rich dad poor dad uh no the quadrant yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. so that was the most the, the latest one the more excelled version um but then also i'm reading another book called the fear bubble the fear bubble yeah so it's uh it's actually written by uh, a guy who has a history in the british military so he worked for the sas um which is like the elite of the elite and uh he basically is talking about how he conquered his fear and what he did to compartmentalize <laughs> um his fear so when he was in like full on combat where he's shooting at people and they're shooting back um and it's like a life or death situation how did he how he was able to put fear aside and just focus on on what was in front of him uh but yeah there's loads i mean uh, richard branson's autobiography was also a, a really good one uh and especially with him being somebody that i feel is quite similar to me like i i didn't do very well at school i didn't like to concentrate at school it just wasn't me learning wasn't wasn't great but to see that how somebody has gone on to create such a successful business uh i find fascinating so yeah wow. there's, there's 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 loads there's loads i actually bought two new books yeah and they arrived today in the house uh one of them is how to master the art of selling yeah because i feel like i want to upgrade a little bit yeah in that and the other one is the art of war nice it just like because i feel it's like more i love to strategize you yeah. know i'm not saying that i'm good at it, i'm still learning and yeah. i hope i'll be good at it but just things like that makes me really really read more yeah and be motivated yeah 100% i think uh you know it's it's just a, it's just an, a, another way of learning right and and also these these books are written by people that have been there done that gone on to create big things um absolutely But I uh I want to thank you because I know you're such a busy guy and also as I said it's the first day around and I didn't realize but it was going to fall on this day but to be able to come down have a chat with me and kind of like share your story and inspirations and 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 how you've got to where you are today um is really appreciative and I hope you enjoyed the 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 chat as well I really did every single second of it yeah I loved and and when you asked me like at the beginning how am I as a podcast guest it um you got even better because like you you like a book of analogies you 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 kept coming out with so many different analogies of life and uh it's uh it's it's a fascinating way to 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 think about things so uh i'm excited to the fact that we've been able to connect and hopefully have a friendship as well now and and see you Absolutely. grow and see you grow and Absolutely. see it's and see how things go same back to you yeah i'm i'm looking forward to trying some of these hair care products as well I'm, I'm going to make me. sure you have <laughs> hopefully you can help me with these thin parts on the side <laughs> our SOS uh, ampules will I'll yeah. I'll send you like uh, a stack of 24 yeah amazing thank you and by the way if you if you only listen to the audio version I'm not actually that bold you know you can go over to YouTube check out the cameras it's just cuz uh you know I'm I'm 34 now I I I think you're good <laughs> I, like I, I don't know why you're stressing about it no nah, I'm only joking I'm only joking but yeah no it's honestly been a pleasure um I hope you've enjoyed it as well and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And for those listening at home, uh if you haven't already make sure you head over and subscribe. We without your support by liking, sharing, um commenting, um we wouldn't be here today and I wouldn't be able to invite amazing guests like Martin onto this show. Um you know when I first started this podcast four years ago, it, it's it's just grown leaps and bounds and that's because of the support that you've shown us. So I thank you for that. um but if you listening for the first time hit the subscribe button share it with your friends um because uh each week i get to sit with amazing people like martin and as i said without your support i wouldn't be able to do that so until next week guys thank you very much and see you later